Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today on the west side of the map in red is Kazva playing as the French. And on the east side of the map we have got Bitconiked and that's actually Beastie QT playing in pink as the Mongols. Now we know it's Beastie QT because this is actually one of his alternate accounts and the map is Ancient Spires. The French versus Mongols, a very interesting matchup with the Khan being annoying as always from the Mongols. It's such a pain to be honest with you guys. The Khan just firing his annoying arrow, which you can do absolutely nothing about, by the way, in the Dark Age, really. And um, oh, it is what it is, so Kaz is going to have to micro those villagers back and forth, the ones that are weak at least. Uh, it does actually take out a sheep there. Well, I mean, gets a bit of revenge. Kills a sheep there with a the villager. But to be fair, with all the amount of shorefish that's available, that Beast is going to take with the Dark, I don't think Beast will mind losing a sheep or two. All right, lots of fish to be had here. There's a decent number, actually. Holy smokes. One, two, three, four, five little circles of shorefish, each having 500 food. That's 2,500 food. Not too shabby. Now, it is an interesting thing about th thinking about um, the shorefish. It always usually is quite worth it, but it does delay your uptime. So if you're thinking you're going to face early aggression, it can be a bit tricky. You will have to be a bit defensive because obviously Beastie, what he's doing now is quite focusing quite heavy on wood, which you wouldn't normally do unless you're going for the waters. And uh, Kazva, on the other hand, is making a bit more of a standard build order. He's got sort of eight villages on food, three villages to gold, a villager to wood, two villages to wood. So it's a very standard French opening here for a land map. And Beastie is the one going for the shorefish with Kazva not really opting for it this occasion. Both players do have two scouts. So Kazva will want to get plenty of sheep because, of course, that's what he's relying on in terms of his food resource. It means that he'll get up to the next stage quicker, be a bit more aggressive, perhaps. But Beastie, with the Shorefish, will have a really, really strong power spike in sort of the late Feudal Age. Because, of course, Kazva is already on the way to the Feudal Age with the School of Cavalry, as expected. You know, you never really see the Chamber of Commerce in 1v1s. Going up with four villages, so as you can see, there's a very standard opening. Sometimes you might see four villages on gold. No Lumber Camp yet. We shall see it. I suspect what Kazva's doing, he's saving up the wood for a mill and then going for Wheelbarrow because... I can't really explain any other reason not to get a lumber camp here. Going to get a house and then probably a mill now as well. I mean, we could go for a dock, but I think we just saw the mill there. Yeah, it is indeed the mill. Uh, that's what it's going to spend its wood for and get the wheelbarrow and then look to get the lumber camp. Okay, with Beastie going quite heavy on the wood, as you can see, getting the fishing ships, all of them already. Villager out there getting shore fish as well. Kazva is going to be completely aware of that now. Ovu is sitting there nice and pretty behind that. And uh, interestingly, this is actually pretty obstructed i don't i don't think there's a way through there so a small wooden wall there to the uh lake wait what the that's a bit of awkward way to place your walls that's actually the french wait those are kazva's walls what is going on kazva is going to actually build the palisade walls and he's going to be laming the shore fish holy smokes we haven't seen this happen since the early days of age of empires 4 uh there were some you know bug exploits and whatnot happening and people were well, some people were abusing it, and needless to say, those people aren't playing Age of Empires 4 anymore. For some reason, I don't know, we don't see those players anymore. But this is strange, Kazfa actually going to be laming the shorefish. And this is actually really contentious, because it's not like this is an OP strategy that's meant to be in the game. This is not meant to be in the game, ladies and gents. This is a bug, and this is a bug exploit. Because Kazfa is going to be deleting a lot of fish here. There's 500 there, 500 there, 1,000. 1,500 fish. And Beastie has invested a lot into the waters, guys. That is six fishing ships. That is no joke. 75 wood a pop. This is going to be made completely redundant. Where is that villager? Is that villager coming? Holy smoke. So this is really interesting. This is going to be a contentious issue. I mean, this kind of brings into the question of sportsmanship. Obviously, in tournaments, this would never happen, by the way, in tournaments. I don't think. Not not in tournaments that are, have any sort of weight. Anyway, this would be banned. And uh, that would mean disqualification. And yeah, Kazva's just going to delete it. Holy moly. He's just going to build and delete it. And that's a lot of food that Beastie's going to lose out on. And it's not just the food. It's the investment that Beastie cannot recuperate. Because these fishing ships, they don't do anything else. It's not like they can transform onto land units. These guys are useless now. And the uh, the fish have been deleted. Holy smokes, Beastie's economy is going to look in tatters now because look how much wood is going to be. I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of villages on wood, nine villages. You'd never have that many villages on wood. He's going to the Feudal Age, but Kaz has been in the Feudal Age for quite some time. Kazwa has wheelbarrow. He's got his economy set up and running. 
but Beastie has really been uh, lamed here, to be honest. And you have to question the move because you'll never see this in tournaments. It is the rank ladder, so technically, I mean, you know, you can't stop this happening. But it is a bug exploit, and everyone knows that it's a bug. It is a bug. It's not meant to happen. It's not part of the game, right? How do you guys feel about this? I feel a little bit uneasy because it is, you know, it's a form of flaming and it's not really meant to be there. It's a bug exploit. It's a bug uh, abuse, rather. So there's probably two thoughts on this. One is that it's unsportsmanship-like behavior. The other one is that, well, it's part of the game. It's there. Why should there be a problem with it? Uh, why can't we exploit bugs? And I suppose that's way one way of thinking about it. Um, and it is the rank ladder, it's not a tournament, you know, you don't have any rules per se. Um, but this has denied a lot of food for Beastie, and I don't think we should underestimate the significance of this, because this is seven fishing ships that are going to be completely useless any moment now. And that's 1,500 food that Beastie cannot get, and that's put his economy completely out of kilter. He can, he's going to need to redistribute his economy, and um, that's a huge moment in this game, make no mistake about it. This is a huge moment in the game. Uh, the fastest food gathering resource has been taken away from him. And look, he's just gonna he's just gonna delete his units. His seven fish ships gone down the drain. Holy moly, I haven't seen something like this in Age of Empires for in a long time. But we need to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this issue? You think it's unsportsmanship behavior? You think it's something that should just be allowed and it's just part of the game? But it's just not, though, is it? Because outpost rushing is part of the game. It's very hell of annoying to face up against. But it is technically part of the game. It's not a bug, basically. But this is bug abuse. This is a bug exploit. But at the same time, some people may be of the opinion, well, it's there. It's allowable. As long as it's in the game, it's doable. But then it comes down to the question, just because something can be done, should it be done? That's a pretty weak argument, in my opinion. But uh, I'm sure this is going to spark a lot of discussion and debate within the community and just uh, let me know. Pop a comment in the comment section below about your thoughts on this. I think now that we've seen it, we can't ignore it, can we? <laughs> if we didn't see it, it'd be a different story, but we've seen it now. Can't really ignore it. Let me know what you think. All right, but let's focus on the match now. I think Beastie needs to recover. He's probably, um, I don't know. For me personally, I, there's no way of telling what Beastie will be feeling right now. And frankly, he's a pro player, so he's got the resources to cope with something like this. But frankly, I'd be pretty tilted. Um, I mean, I get tilted with outpost rushes as it is, and, and that's just part of the game. But yeah, that's got to be very annoying, uh, especially having his economy completely set up in that way, by the way. He's really fully committed to that. Seven fishing ships, that's not a joke. It's not like he did, made four fishing ships, three fishing ships, just, you know, slowly building the food. He proper committed hard. Um, anyway, it is what it is. Let's move on. Let's focus on the rest of the game, and we can have a comment discussion about it, you know, after the video, after you've watched it, and... We can talk about it in the comment section, but now, Kazva um, is going to be behind in terms of the Castle Age uptime because Beastie is going to go up with the uh, step route out. That will help his economy slightly, but one thing to notice on we may have missed in the discussion is that second town center for Kazva. That's going to really ramp up the village count. 30 for Beastie, 42. That's 12 villages extra that Kazva has on the field already. Only 10 minutes into the game. With 12 villager lead, that's going to just keep scaling and scaling and scaling. Don't forget, each French town centre works faster than any other town centre in the game. So even just one town centre for, for Kazva versus one town centre for Beastie, Beastie would be lagging behind. But it's actually two town centres for Kazva. So that village count is really going to be coming dis disparate. Um, the only thing I can think that Ka Beastie will need to do is get a town centre of his own, a second town centre. Going for a prayer tent, looking to get some relics. That'll be key. That might help balance things. Now there are a decent number of villages here. 10 villages on gold. So kind of adding another 5 villages worth here on gold. Because of course the step route increases the amount of gold deposited by 50%. So the village difference at the moment. Beastie 32, 45 for Kazva. Let's just hold that as well. There's a 13 villager gap there. Minus the 5 will make uh, a good 8 villager gap. But one thing to consider is that Beastie Cutie is in the Castle Age. He'll be looking to get some relics in, going for a prayer tent, getting a shaman out. Kazva's walled up significantly on his map. He's very well protected and safe. And well, you get the feeling that laming action has done a lot for Kazva in terms of giving him an advantage in this game. Does have a couple of knights, two scouts escorting them on the front line, just giving them the extra vision. 
that they need to see what's going on. Ovu going to be running out of stone very soon, so Beastie will want to relocate that soon enough. And uh, looks like Kaz are looking just to finish off the walls here on the north corner of the map. On Ancient Spires here today, there's the Castle Age for Beastie Cutie. Sorry, wait, for Kazza rather. Beastie Cutie's been in the Castle Age for quite some time. Kaz for going up to Guild Hall, toggles on food. Such a quite a nice looking landmark. Monastery going down for Kazza. He's going to look to get some of the relics of his own. And looks like the Shaman going on the right side for, Ke for Beastie Cutie, picking up a relic. The first relic to be picked up in the game. Going to be bringing that back home. Another Shaman training in that prayer tent. Kazva just keeping an eye on this relic. He won't want to lose too many relics, especially with the lead he's got now. And let's take a look at the Villager lead, because that's going to be slowly extend extending, I'm sure of it. 56 for Kazva. 37, almost 20 villagers, but minus the 5. 15 villager lead, really. And uh, things looking good for Kazva. Getting the upgrades, double broad axe coming in. Bit of a fight here in the centre. Kazo cannot really take that fight. There are two lancers on the field. Now, these are veteran royal knights though. And there are spearmen going on the chase. Looks like Kazo turns around. Looks to just maybe try and take a, a favourable engagement. Before the spears can catch up. But the spears do catch up. Good micro here on display by the pro players. And the knights for Kazo. Just go past that relic. It looks like Kazo is going to be pushed away from that relic. And Beastie might be picking up that relic in behind. And do we see that shaman coming back with the relic? We have got one relic deposited. Another town centre going up for Beastie. That will stem the flow of the economy disparity. But even two town centres for Mongols and Beastie is not going to be enough. Because he'll still be lagging behind by the two French town centres working faster. So the longer the game goes on, you get the feeling that Casper will be putting into a strong lead. But uh, the relics might have something to say with that. And this is a good engagement or Kazva backs off though. Okay, Scholar is coming out now for Kazva, looking to pick up this relic on the left side. Beastie picking up the relic in the middle, that's quite significant, that's kind of a neutral relic that he's picking up. Does have that second town centre up and running now. Alright, 13... So 14 minutes on the clock, relics being picked up, market going down for Kazva, looking to perhaps rebalance the economy. Going for archery ranges, it's going to be Arbolatria, I suspect. The Knights and Arbolatria as the uh, army of composition here for the French. Double stable here, effectively. Kazva is on stone as well, so we're probably looking to get a keep up relatively soon. Nicely walled up across the map and... Got to feel bad for Beastie here, losing that fish early. The relics are going to be pulled in now. Going to be three relics already. That's going to be very nice for the economy. Yep, triple archery range production. You can see the Arbolatria are being queued up. Those will be popping out very soon. And, and I feel like Arbolatria are incredibly strong because they have a really high base damage that they dish out. And uh, they can take relatively good trades against uh, Spearmen. Especially if they get the armor upgrade, the melee armor upgrade. Uh, where is it? This one, Gambesons. Which is actually happening right now. So Kaz is going to get the Gambesons upgrade. And uh, for me personally, playing against Knights, the issue is that Beast is going for sort of Lancers and I suspect might be forced into Spearmen. We shall see what he decides to go for. He'd have quite a few Spearmen on the field earlier on. And yeah, here they are. There's, no, those aren't the Spearmen. The Spearmen are somewhere. But in any case, it does look like Spearmen are coming out slowly but surely and the issue with that is that it doesn't have the mobility with that and frankly French knights and knights in particular they take really good trades I feel like they take the trades are too good for the knights at the moment in terms of the game balance if you can just build up a critical mass of knights these guys are really strong especially in the imperial age when they start getting you know French upgrades like royal bloodlines and uh, even though spearmen are technically technically trash units we call them in age of empires too in particular you know the fact that they don't cost any gold they just you need huge numbers of them, and it's quite hard because the French with the lances or the knights, or work, whichever civilization has the knights, have always have the mobility in that fight. Charmin, going to be bringing back another relic. The good numbers of relics here, three already, going to get a fourth here. So that'd be a ten villager equivalency in terms of resources, so that's pretty nice for Beastie. There is a sacred site has been taken by Kazva. 
game going into the 16th minute. There is a siege workshop going up. Well, it's already up for Kazvo. Getting a Springhold. Two Springholds. Maybe even a Trebuchet to follow. Let's just see what he decides to do. And uh, as you can see, Kazvo actually getting his Shorefish. Uh, just milling it with the villagers there. He's just going forward here towards something. Yeah, keep getting we put down there on the 8,000 tile gold. That is very significant, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a big part of gold that's protected for Kazva. They can gather as the game wears on. Kazva does get population capped. But 58 villagers at the moment to 89. That villager difference really increasing now. You just get the feeling that Beastie really needed to add that third town center. That would have sent him pretty far behind, though, it has to be said. Ovu going there on the left side on a 2400 stone pile. A sacred site on the right, going to be taken by uh, Beastie. They've actually got a lot of spearmen on the field, so this is what we discussed. You just get the feeling that spearmen just always are kind of an underwhelming unit. They're, they're very slow to move, but they can be very effective in, in small amounts of defenses. You have to be very good at microing them, which Beastie obviously will be doing. Um, but it's very difficult to move forward and be aggressive with them. Purely because of the mobility issue, we shall see if Beastie is able to kind of contain any forward push that does come forward. Speaking of which, it does appear to be happening now. There's lots of nice arbitrary and two springles in there for countering any mangonels that might be there for the Mongols. The veteran royal knights are going to go through and just siege down that outpost. Doesn't mind about the springled emplacement. These guys are hella tanky. These, yeah, th th these outposts aren't doing anything to these guys anymore. And there are military on the field as well. Getting an outpost there on the shoreline. Looking to get that vision there, the French played by Kazma. 18 minutes into the game. And things slowly building up for Kazma. The momentum is coming out. Lots of spears here for Beastie. And I, just, I don't know how I feel about this. Got a couple of man in arms there as well. Look at the villagers. 68 for Beastie. 99, 100 there for Kazma. Good solid 30 villager lead. Minus a couple that he has on gold. Probably it works out to be about 20 village league when you factor in uh, the relics and the sacred site as well. Although BC has a sacred site, cancelling that out as well. And uh, this is a big fight here in the center. In the stealth forest, the knights, they're overwhelming. The spears are too late to the party. They've missed out on all the action because now the knights pull back. Arbaletriere, we discussed this earlier, the Arbaletriere are incredibly strong, especially with the upgraded and the pavis being deployed. But the fact is that these Arbolitria have Gambesons, the increased uh, melee armor, so they won't be taking too much damage from the Spears. We're dealing a lot of damage with a base attack on the Spears. The Knight's going to be micro, looking to try and get a charge attack, taking relatively good trades here, Kazva. Needs to back off with the Knight, so it doesn't really need to engage with the Spears. He's got the Arbolitria, he's got the ranged attack, and now Beastie loses everything. He loses everything here, and now reinforcements are coming in for Kazva with two Springles and a Mangonel to back up into that. And uh, Beastie's going to struggle now because he doesn't really have the economy just to replenish the army. Kazva won't mind taking that fight at all because, frankly, he can produce. Look at the food. Look at the gold. In fact, he also has the guild hall. Has he cashed that in? He has indeed cashed that in for the food. And Kazva is going to be looking to be aggressive now. He's almost population capped, I suspect. Well, actually, no, it's a bit far off that. But 154 villages. Well, 108 villages to 76. And Kazva going to be continuing to increase that. So as the game goes on, you feel that... Beastie is going to be just, just being edged out. Again, the Arbolitria in behind. And this is why this armor composition is so strong, because any engagement, not only can Kazva force the fight with the knights, as soon as Beastie comes in, those Arbolitria will be firing. And if Beastie takes just any moment of indecisiveness, say he goes towards the Arbolitria, and then he backs off, he'll be losing units, because the Arbolitria will be firing. Kazva backs off. He's looking to build up the army again. Keep going there with two stables. Building up some barracks and maybe some spearmen coming out onto the field. And that won't be a bad idea for Kazva, because in fact, going full spears here will be working. His spears will fight off the opponent's spears and also the cavalry on there. Uh, there's very little to no man at arms there, so that's the good thing for Kazva's switch here. Getting a trebuchet on the field, looking to build up a siege army in behind the front lines. And uh, 120 population for Beastie. 171 for Kazva. Kazva just feels like he's going to be building up his population, maybe even looking to go to the Imperial Age. In fact, he's going to be able to afford the Imperial Age pretty soon. Getting an outpost here on the left side there, Kazva, looking to just get that vision on this goal. Doesn't want to 
give up any gold positions that it can afford not to. And as you can see now, Beastie, because of the static nature of his uh, units, just how poor mobility they are in terms of the spears, means that has to camp at home. Can't be aggressive with them. To be fair, it doesn't really have the army to be aggressive anyway. And Kaz for now is going to be going up to the Imperial Age. I suspect it will be with the um, College of Artillery. Can't really see too much grounds for Red Palace. We shall see what it decides to go up with. And that College of Artillery will help with the siege push. We need to see where he places that landmark because I'm sure he'll be going up to the Imperial Age. No real reason not to. Does place a landmark down. And it is here. It is the College of Artillery rushing it up with 22 villagers. And this is significant because this means that he'll be able to go up to the next stage and get those all important upgrades in the Imperial Age. And BC can't really deny this. And BC himself is absolutely a million miles in terms of food away from that Imperial Age. And so now Kasva not only is going to have a military numbers advantage, he's going to have a military quality advantage as well. And now he's going to push forward. And as you can see, he can dictate the fight. Arbiter trying to edge towards this. Lance is being pushed through to the right side. Beastie looking to flank his opponent. Maybe get some value on the right, but well, Kasva does have some knights there. Kasva reaches the Imperial Age and has some blacksmith upgrades already being researched. Fitted, uh, fitted leatherwork and iron under mesh coming in. There's the elite royal knight upgrade coming in and uh we should probably see the guild hall i was literally just cashed that in so we didn't see how much that was it didn't seem too significant although it could have been significant just queuing up all the upgrades veteran spearman veteran oh, sorry what yeah elite horsemen elite spearmen these are elite upgrades for the imperial age elite arbitria holy moly guacamole there's the imperial age coming up for beastie but the timing here is not on Beastie's side because Kaz was going to have his upgrades. And we've said it before, we'll say it again. When you take up to the next stage, that can often be your weakest time in the game. Because Kazva is going to think, well, it's going to be a massive signal to Kazva. As soon as Beastie reaches the Imperial Age, Kazva, I'm almost sure of it, is going to go forward. It's going to be aggressive because he'll want to take a fight before the Imperial Age upgrades come in for Beastie. But speaking of Beastie, he's cycling through on the right side. Kazva not reacting too quickly. Villagers do get pulled away from that gold line. Won't be able to lose too many, you don't think. Uh, just doesn't even lose a single villager. Wheelbarrow coming in clutch here. But Beastie going to be sieging down that, that gate. That will be going down quickly. Kazva saving those villagers. There is the Imperial Age. And this is good timing for Beastie. You have to say he's being aggressive whilst he's the, uh, the Imperial Age. Trying to keep Kazva's army at home. And that's the key issue. Beastie being a pro player, obviously... He's attacking now because he knows that he's vulnerable. He knows that Kazva's going to be hitting him unless he hits first. And that's exactly what's going to happen anyway. Kazva feels confident in his ability to defend his base. And he's going to be heading forward now. And the problem for Kazva, or the problem for Beastie rather, is that his army split into two. And he may not have enough to deal with this forward push coming in for Kazva now, playing as the French. Kazva looking to defend his position. He's going to lose a lot of villagers. Holy moly. He's going to lose a lot of villagers on the stone. You can feel it now. Kazva oof, doesn't have the army, doesn't have the static defenses in the right spot here. Kazva will be able to sweep this up with the elite royal knights. But at what cost? Because these villagers are absolutely melting. Let's take a look at the villager count for Kazva. Dwindling now. 114. He's got so much to start off with though. Looking to get a keeper here on the right side on that stone. Maintaining control there. That fight is happening here. Spearman taking a good fight. But the Arbolatria doing decent damage. Gamberson's coming in clutch. There is a Manganel that does get taken down. Springwald's also getting in the action. Arbolatria sweeped that all up. Beastie losing everything on the front line. And I suspect he's lost everything here already on the stone pile. That is indeed the case. Beastie's army looking poor. Just dwindling. Doesn't have the resources to replenish. Has the 67 army. 19 for Beastie! And the Knights here coming into clutch for Kazva, they're just so strong, especially with the Arbolatria in behind. And even with Horsemen as the counter unit to the Arbolatria, these Arbolatria have Gambersons. And they can do a lot of damage in terms of base attack, and yep, Arbolatria will win this. There are two Springles looking to try and take out the Bombard. Beastie looking to repair. Kazva does lose a lot of villages though. He was at 140, now dwindling at 92. I say dwindling. Not too far behind Beastie anyway, but look at the military count. That's what's going to tell the story here. 25 minutes into the game, 26 minutes edging forward. The Knights are coming in now for Kazva, replenishing the army. He's split into different groups. Villagers on the woodline are going to go down for Beastie. Beastie struggling. He loses the Bombards. Arbolatry on the north part of that base. He is pushing in now, Kazva. Kazva is assaulting those villagers. 
Beastie looking in trouble and you get the feeling that he's going to be waving that white flag. The French for Kasler coming into clutch. Those knights doing so much damage. And there is it. there it is. The French from Kasler demolishes the Mongols for Beastie. But there is a big talking point in this game. And it has to come down to this issue here. The bug abuse. The bug exploit. What would you call it? Because it's not an OP strategy. It's not meant to be there. It's not a part of the game not meant to be it is technically there because the devs haven't fixed it but it's not meant to be there it's probably coined as a bug exploit a bug abuse this is a big discussion point in this game and i don't think we can ignore it we've watched it i'm sure people are going to have their opinions it comes down to sportsmanship and you're never going to see that in tournaments because it's banned in any tournament that's weight that's kind of you know worth its weight it would be banned and everyone knows that this shouldn't be part of the game but Kasva did it. Did he exploit a bug or was he just merely using a mechanic in the game? It changed the whole game. I, I don't think there's any dispute about that. There's 1,500 food, seven fishing ships invested in that early stage of the game. That is a huge investment, completely wiped out, completely obliterated, completely useless because of that bug being used. Holy moly, it's a big talking point. I think it changed the face of this game in particular. And it comes down to sportsmanship. What do you guys think in the comment section below? Do you think it was unsportsmanship-like behavior? Do you think Casper was just playing the game as the game is? Let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the casted game nevertheless. And if you did, do give the video a thumbs up. If you're interested in more casted games, we've got plenty on the channel. Click the right-hand cast screen now and you can see some hopefully high quality, I believe. I hope you guys believe it to be too. Um, some high quality casted games for Age of Empires 4. Take care and see you next time.